Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Global Wrestling News. I'm Scott Casper. That's Tony Hager. Our first topic today. Many thought he was done. People thought he didn't have it. But Robbie Smith has proven, indeed, that he has what it takes to bring home medals, not only making the U.S. world team for the fourth time in Vegas, but also bringing home a bronze from the Pan American Championships in less than two weeks. Joining the show is the 2016 Olympian at 130 kilos, the big man, the big beard, Robbie Smith. Robbie, how are you? Thank you so much, Scott. I'm glad to be back on the show. I love the show. And uh, yeah, thank you. It was, it was a good tournament. I wrestled well. Um, I was just happy to be out there competing. And uh, it, it was it was nice to compete, not just for competing, but competing back in front of the United States, the crowd here, because, you know, it, uh, I feel that the crowd ever since 2015 at the World Championships, this the, the crowd and the spectators have really taken a liking to me. And I love giving them a show and competing in front of them. So watching your post match interview after you won the the, the trials at one thirty, um, you made some comments and and it was as if there were doubters and and even maybe some haters out there, people who were not believing in you. Yeah. Uh, can you can you talk about that and what it does to an athlete when an athlete is coming back from injuries? What does it do to you mentally and emotionally? Um, you know, it, it, I was dealing with injury uh, for a while now. Um, hurt my wrist last year uh, before the Olympics. Um, we were training in Azerbaijan. It was uh, actually in uh, 2015. I, oh, I tore some ligaments in my wrist, partially tore them. And then uh, at the Olympics, I made them worse. So I had to stop. I had to take a break, get some surgery done with that. Um, and uh, so I was coming back from that. The, and actually there was a 90% chance the surgery would work and there was a 10% chance it didn't and it didn't work for me. So I was dealing, I've been dealing with that. Um, and we're, we're on top of it now. And then, uh, you know, but as, after I got back from dealing with my surgery, I came back and I already had a high ankle sprain. So then I had a high ankle sprain and, um, trying to get back from that. And I was in a boot for almost a month and, you know, it just didn't seem like it was going to really work and, and, and start working for me again. And so it was frustrating, of course. Uh, you never, as an athlete, you just want to get back to competing and, and doing what you do best. And um, it wasn't working for me. And I was like, why is somebody trying to tell me something and all this stuff? But then, you know, healed up, started rolling again, was doing okay. Uh, I had about a month to train before Denmark. Uh, when I went over to Denmark and, and wrestled and, um, you know, had a round robin over there. I uh, had five matches all together. Um, and uh, I lost my first one, 3-2, but then came back and won four in a row in a dominating fashion and actually ended up winning the tournament. Um, so, you know, at, the, at that time, I, I had my wrist and my ankle, but then I tore my uh, tricep. And which was messing with my flexors. So I'm like, man, is my body just getting too old? What's going on? Am I pushing myself too much? So I had to pull myself out of the next week tournament that was in Croatia. It was the Grand Prix. So um, now I got three injuries I'm dealing with. So get back from rehabbing my tricep to going to, uh, you know, getting back to work. And then I tore my, M I sprained my MCL. And I was like, man, I just, I just can't win. So, um, but what's great about being a wrestler and what has taught me so much within wrestling is you never give up. You just keep go pushing forward. Um, you, you have to heal yourself, of course, but you're going to be okay. And it comes from my support system that I have and, and uh, the people that love and care for me and, 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 and help me out. So just kept pushing along. People kept telling me, you know, you, I don't care. Even if you're 50%, you're, um, you're, you're still the best wrestler in this country. So, you know, that's my, my dad would always tell me that he's like, I don't care if you're, you're 50%, you're ha you only have half a body, you're still going to win. So, um, I just kept that mindset and, and kept pushing forward. But then there, with that, you still, you get people that, uh, doubt you. So, yeah. And, um, so, you know, that, that dealing with injury, you know, it, it makes sense for people to doubt me. Uh, plus, you know, they they call it Matt Russ, so they don't know, um, you know, if I'm going to be as sharp as I am. And uh, been in competition since 
since the Olympic Games in Rio, with the exception of the Thor Masters in Denmark, which you did remarkably well at, by the way. Uh, and, and you brought that up. You made mention that perhaps people look beyond or past your performance there in Denmark when actually it lit up our screen. Yeah, no, and and uh, people, I guess I don't know because of caliber caliber tournament or, or what it was, but I, definitely people look past. It. I mean, people were saying that I've only com I haven't competed, but I, I have competed. That's why I went to Denmark to compete to see where I'm at and to see how I'm doing, and um, wrestled well, uh, wrestled really well, um, and beat some quality wrestlers. And uh, so you know, it was. I don't know. It is what it is. It, it, you, you always have the people that doubt and hate and, and um, don't want to believe in you. But for me, I take that as um, as, as just fuel and it pisses me off. And I'm <laughs> so going leaving Las Vegas. What did you take away from Vegas? You know, that I it, leaving Las Vegas. Uh, well, it's a great movie. Right? Uh, uh, but um, I. I didn't have time to really think. I, I, I actually, I got home Sunday, packed my bag, uh, washed my clothes, repacked my bag, and went to Brazil for the Pan Am Championships uh, and wrestled down there. And uh, so, you know, all it just did is give me confidence, give me that, you know, I'm still the baddest man in this country, and um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the best we got, and I'm, you know, going ahead and forward. Robbie, we love you so much. Appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations on uh, your success, and I don't ever want to call it a comeback. It was a little time off to deal with injuries and a continuation on what has become an outstanding career. Thanks for taking the time to join me in the Nike Hot Seat. Hey, Scott, this is awesome. I love being on the show, and uh, thanks for having me again. Anger affecting Robbie's choice of language. <laughs> I mean, I plowed the honesty. Um, nice choice of words, and, uh, you know, Jordan Oliver, he was doubted as well, so for him to come back, make the team, some of this I think is good, you know, it's good for our sport, it's good for media to, to doubt these guys, because they need somebody to keep them in check, and uh, it's paying off. All right, time for a quick timeout. Up next is Corey Cooperman. He's returned to Ithaca to coach the New York Regional Training Center. It's big news. He's next on GWN, brought to you by Pure and Clean Sport. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
Three-time NCAA All-American Corey Cooperman's first job after graduating from Lehigh was as an assistant at Cornell. Now some eight years later, Cooperman is making a return to Ithaca as the head freestyle coach at the New York Regional Training Center. Here to discuss his transition back to New York is Coach Cooperman. Coach, welcome back. How are you doing, Scott? Good. I'm, I'm interested to talk to you about what's happening, but before we get to that, I know you have something to say to your current employer. What is that? I just want to thank them, uh, the Galli family. They do. They did a lot for myself, my family, and they do a lot for a lot of people. Um, St. Paul's High School here in Maryland has taken a huge jump. The Galli's help you know kids that wouldn't maybe be able to afford it going to a, such a prestigious school. It's a great school academically, and uh, the wrestling program is really taking off. Head coach Rob Eider, we had John Morrison, myself, um, Les Sigmund involved. And a lot of good student athletes, wrestlers that, you know, Kurt McHenry, world champ, um, a lot of different guys that get the opportunity to train there. Um, that's at the high school level. Uh, at the senior level, we have uh, different wrestlers that you see sponsored by Team Milwaukee. Um, the company that my boss, my boss Joe Galli, uh, he's the CEO of TTI, which is Tektronic Industries. And, you know, that's Milwaukee, Ryobi, Rigid, or Delahoma, you know, just a million different uh, brands. And... You know, guys like Kyle Dake, um, Chris Perry, uh, David Taylor, the list goes on. Um, we give them, or my boss, you know, uh, through the company, gives them a situation where they can stay where they believe they need to be in order to be successful. You know, so whether it's at Penn State, Cornell, Oklahoma State, where those guys want to be, um, they get to stay. You know, Tony Ramos just, um, you know, won the Open. David Taylor won the Open. Uh, Kyle Dake. Should have won the Open. <laughs> um, you know, but it gives them an opportunity. Chris Perry had a good tournament. Josh Kindig had a good tournament. It just gives those guys opportunity to train where they feel they need to be in order to be successful. So the Galli family um, just does a tremendous amount um, to help, you know, whether it's the senior level guys, you know, college level, um, with coaches and athletes and, um, you know, high school. And, 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 yeah, and they've done just a, a tremendous amount for my family. Um, my boss is, uh, Joe is always uh, in and out of the country. He's doing, making moves and doing different things. So I've had a, I've learned a lot from him. I mean, what kind of, how can you get a better mentor than a guy like that? And his wife has done a tremendous amount for my family and I just, you know, teaching us, like she always said, it takes a village to raise a, to raise a child. And uh, I just learned a lot about her for, um, you know, just being a father and, you know, trying to be a, the best role model, being the best person I can be. So Cindy Galli um, has just done a tremendous amount. Joe uh, Peter just graduated. He's graduated from Stanford. Just um, won a lot of accolades at Stanford, which is a you know a tremendous school academically and athletically. And uh, I'm gonna miss my little Xander. Uh, that was uh, their youngest son who I've been training. He's just an unbelievable person. So mature. He's gonna do some great things on and off the mat. I'm excited to see his future, and I hope I can stay involved in their lives as much as possible. Corey Cooperman, our guest, he uh, joins us today to talk about his new job that he will be taking uh, over at the as the freestyle coach, the freestyle head coach at the Finger Lakes Wrestling Club, and uh, as that program continues to grow. You might remember Corey as one of the most sought-after recruits in the country. When back uh, initially, he had committed to the University of Minnesota, rethought that, decided he wanted to go to Lehigh and uh, become a truly great wrestler. You might remember the 2006 NCAA semifinals, a, a storybook match against Tion Ware. Uh, but, Corey, now we go to, uh, we head back up to Cornell. Uh, you've been there before, and now it's, it's time for you and your, your little family to go back up there and make an impact on the senior-level guys and then even on some of the uh, young kids that come in during the summers uh, and for camps and clinics. Talk to us about how this all came about. Um, well, coming out of uh, college, I was, I knew what, you know, when I was younger, I knew I was going to be a coach. Um, it's just something I love to do. I always felt that I'd be a better coach than I was uh, as a wrestler. And I, I still think that is true. I think I've um, accomplished more as a coach than, than I did on the mat. Um, you know, but like I just said, Joe Galli, tremendous mentor, um, leader for, for me, just a, a great person to have in my life. Uh, when I got out of college, and I was taking the job, Rob Cole, um, he was doing big things. You know, I had a great college coach, Greg Strobel, Chris Ayers, Jason Kutz, Kerry McCoy, um, 
and Pat Santoro for a little bit. Um, but when I was, you know, when we were at when I was at Lehigh, we won five EIWA titles in a row, right? And that was the first time that you know a school had won, you know, five conference titles in a row. But when I was there, we can see Cornell was was nipping at our heels. I think my senior year, we may have tied them in a dual meet, um, and they had this unbelievable. The, the Freeman Wrestling Facility was just uh, an unbelievable thing. It was the first of its kind. First. You know, freestanding wrestling facility, and that just showed the dedication that Cornell, Andy Noel, athletic director, uh, Steve Berber, um, another athletic assistant athletic director, the commitment they had to wrestling, and that's something that I want to be a part of. You know, it was uh, cutting edge, and you know, Rob is always pushing the envelope in terms of you know, being an innovator, being a leader in, in our sport, and. You know, I just thought it was, you know, I, I learned a lot from my coaches at Lehigh. I thought it was another great opportunity. I mean, I've, I've been blessed in terms of the mentors and coaches that I've had in my life from when I started out, um, wrestling clubs, the peak and the edge. Um, Wally Muhammad was my first coach at the peak and then at the edge, Ernie Monaco. He had the real like, first wrestling club, you know, and, and then people debate on who had a first club. But this was the first club where at least John Smith was coming to and all these different college coaches were coming to recruit. And then high school, I had Jeff Buxton, arguably the best high school coach in history. Uh, like I said, my college coaches in college at Lehigh were great. Um, and I had another opportunity to learn um, from another great coach who I respected, but I wanted to be able to pick his brain. You know, and I thought when I got to coaching, you know, hey, I'm going to show up in my sweatpants, get a workout in the morning, you know, watch some wrestling on the internet, some flow. Uh, that was just coming about. And, you know, just be ready for another practice in the afternoon. Uh, I quickly learned that was not the case. It was khakis and polo. 7.30 in the morning, getting in that office and just working our tail off all day and night. Um, I learned a lot from him, from Rob Cole, in my three years coaching at Cornell. So when the opportunity came to join him, um, not per se, not working for Cornell University, but working at Cornell University in the Freeman Wrestling Center again, um, an opportunity to you know, coach and uh, train senior level athletes. I've never had that opportunity. Um, I've only coached college, and then I was working with high school and elementary school kids. So an opportunity to coach senior level kids, uh, an opportunity to be back in Ithaca, to be working with Rob Cole again. I thought it was just an unbelievable opportunity and something I couldn't pass on. Corey, thank you for the time. Congratulations, man. Thanks for everything you do, Scott. We really appreciate it. I mean, Tony, what do you make of all this RTC movement around the country? Is it good or bad? I think well, it's obviously it's great. I mean, there's more money coming into the sport. I mean, there's so many things that are happening behind the scenes when it comes to you know trying to get coaches to leave D1 programs to come to theirs. Uh, the money dealings with uh, you know supporters trying to get that money to fund the program. Right. Not only got to pay the athletes, got to pay the coaches. A lot goes into it. So you know, being close to some programs around here. Um, you know, you're hearing the kind of dollar figures that they have to raise, and you know what it takes to do, you know, to, to fly somebody fr clear across the country and uh, move their families. It's uh, it's not cheap. No. And some of these guys are getting it done, obviously, uh, out in, uh, you know, New York. So I think this does a lot. It proves that there's money in our sport. People have it. They just been scared to ask for it. So I also want to throw one other thing in here. There's another baseline here, and I, it goes directly to dual meets. Dual meet attendance is up. It's at its highest point in 15 years. Wrestling's on a roll. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, these RTCs, right? I mean, everyone's got, uh, they got to step up their game. And this is what the RTCs have been, been able to do. And Rob Cole, you know, he's put this this NYRTC together. He, he really has one of the, the one programs that have a full-time freestyle coach and a full-time Greco coach. So that, you know, seeing farther ahead of where the sport is going. Vision. The, you know, the college wrestlers, they want all the types of feels. And Greco, as it grows a little bit, I think they're, they want to feel those underhooks. They want to get that Greco feel. So Rob Cole has put together a great RTC here. Couldn't agree with you more. All right, next up, we have What's Trending with our quick hit segment. That's after the break. You're watching GWN, brought to you by Powerade.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin, Stay pure, stay clean, check them out, pureandcleansports.com. Wow, 40 years, time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. Well, the Roger Reyna head coach of wrestling, Alex Tirapelli, has resigned from the University of Pennsylvania. Tirapelli compiled a 21-18 and 18 record over the three seasons he was there with the Quakers and sent five wrestlers to the NCAAs just last year. Prior to taking over at Penn, Tirapelli served as an assistant at Stanford and UC Davis. The university has launched a national search for his replacement. Something tells me they might already have their man. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I mean, this just smells fishy. You know, I talked to a kid that just got a recruiting letter in the mail on Friday. So three days later after that, that letter got in the mail, you're telling me that this coach uh, is resigning? I just feel like, you know, what, why would he be actively recruiting kids to buy into his program if he was planning on uh, resigning? So something something's up here. All right, so and admittedly, Penn is not an easy place to coach. You have to deal with high academic standards, plus every school in the country is trying to recruit in that state, plus there's limited parking. Yeah, I don't, I don't, like I said, I feel like there's something fishy. I don't feel like he wanted to resign. I mean, he, going into Penn, you know what the recruiting right. is going to be like in that area. You know what the academic standards are already there. Um, you know, one thing we have to look at is, and I, I'm not, I don't want to say this is happening, but, you know, Coach Slay is now, he left USA Wrestling. He's now out in Philly. Out, in Philly. <laughs> um, you know, he was a Penn, he's a Penn alum. Um, so I don't know, you know, if, if they're planning on bringing Slay back into the Penn program, you know, what, what's all going on? Obviously, speculation is going crazy right now with a uh, resignation. You know, Terrapelli hasn't been there more than – he hasn't been there four years, so he hasn't even get to see some of these kids that he recruits, you know, graduate. So it's been quick. All right, since 2001, Denny Deal has been tracking dual attendance numbers from as many programs in Division I as he can possibly track. What he's found is that attendance appears, as we mentioned moments ago, at the highest levels in over a century. For the 11th year in a row, Iowa led the nation in attendance with nearly 10,000 folks at every duel. Penn State came in second with 70 hundred on the average, while Ohio State was third with 58.80. In total, 19 schools reported over 1,000 fans per bout, including several untraditional powers like Army. Princeton and South Dakota State. You know what we have to look at what really has changed in the last ten years and how. I mean, I feel like our we always talk about our sports not growing, but our attendance is growing. And what what is the biggest difference, right? Social media presence. The these uh, these programs are putting more dollars into that. We're streaming more events. We've been in, there's more events that are streamed and on television than ever before. And there's lots of people out there saying, well, if you stream events, it's gonna take away from the tenants, it's gonna take away from my gate. That's, that's farther from the truth. This is proof in the pudding that if you put it on TV, if you put it on the internet, people, more people are gonna notice and they're gonna, they're gonna be a part of that success. Maybe the opportunity to be on TV, I don't know, but 
there's uh, the proof is on the pudding that TV does matter. It's not hard to figure out. When you promote and you get behind a sport, people are going to show up. Princeton and South Dakota State are perfect examples of just that. Well, these coaches now are, are realizing that they have to not only be a coach, they have to be a CEO, and it takes a team to lead a, a huge company. And yeah. these, these, these programs are companies. you got to have assistant coaches. you got to have social media directors. you have all these, all these Food, different people. Beverage. Yeah, I mean, the, to you take the radio stations around the area to get the fans in there, and uh, coaches are really grabbing a hold of that. I mean, you see some of these high, these better, I want to say better programs, but more successful programs have lower attendance than places like Princeton and South Dakota State, and that's that's really a, that's a problem. You can't just have a duel and expect people to show up anymore. Missouri's head coach Brian Smith knows this all too well. When he took over that program, a couple hundred people would go to a duel meet. Now it's in the thousands, and recently... One of the reasons why Jaden Cox well, has been hired as the Tigers' new volunteer assistant. In addition to joining the staff, Cox will resume his freestyle career, starting with the Freestyle World Team trials on June 9th. I mean, did people really think that he was going to go into football? I think it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fun little debate just to think if he could do it, could he be successful? I mean, not doubting him, but right now he's probably one of the hottest wrestlers we have in our country. I mean, he he's uh, he's turned into a face of our sport. He's a singer. He's he's a poet. He's, he's a he does everything. He's a dancer, <laughs> ladies' man. He does he does it all. And Jaden Cox is going to have no issue getting a job outside of outside of wrestling. And I think he, you know. Being, being in the sport, I think, is important, but he realizes that now is his time. He'll have plenty of time to go do other other fun things. He's got goals on other sides. All right, that's all we got for this week. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and The Balance here in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next time for another edition of Global Wrestling News.